I want to talk a little bit today about designing code and what that means. And when you first start out, most students don't want to, but as your code gets more complicated, you really have to think about design ahead of time. So what is the purpose of your project? What does it actually do? What, it, what do you want it to accomplish? And what is it that the user will see? Now we do a lot of very visual type programming games and things. So what is that user interface going to look like? The user experience. And what does your code need to do to actually make all that happen? There are many ways to design code. For the purpose of our class and the things that we're trying to create, um, a very good thing to do is to actually create a sketch of what it is that your project will look like. And this can be paper and pencil, this can be using various tools online, um, and I'll show an example in a moment. And then you also want to create what we call pseudocode, and it's it's just kind of an outline of what the code is going to look like. And again, I'll give you a little example of that so you can see what that looks like too. So what I decided I wanted to create um, in Scratch is a maze running game where I can create a, a little sprite of some kind to run through some maze. Um, so over here, what I did was, this is actually inside Google Draw. So uh, drawings.google.com, I think that's the URL for it, but uh, all the wonderful tools Google has. This one is Google Draw. And uh, what I did was um, I actually imported a, a maze image I found. Uh, you have to be careful when you take somebody else's images. Normally, if it's a design document, it's not going to be public. Nobody's going to see it. Uh, this is not necessarily the design that I'm going to use in my actual um, finished product, but I just wanted to have this concept of here's a maze. And then I thought, well, I need to indicate where you start and I need to indicate where you end. So the function of my, of my program, my project that I want to create in Scratch is that a little icon, which I represented by this little cloud-like shape here, a little sprite, is going to have to navigate its way through until uh, it gets to this end position. And what I want to have happen is um, if the user hits a side on its way to do that, then they're out. It's, it makes a, a stop in the program. So there's like a little extra thing. Not only do you have to get through the maze, you have to get through the maze without touching the sides. And if you hit the side, kind of game over. So I figured, well, you probably need some kind of way to restart it. Uh, now you could decide that the restart could be just the green flag um, on the scratch you know, uh, interface, or you can put a button in. So I thought I'll put a button in here. And this is a very simple project, but it could be made more complex. So part of design is, um, I like to think about what should my version one look like? What is the minimal set of things that need to exist for this to be anything usable and workable? And I think that that would be it. Just a very simple maze. You hit the side, you're out. If you make it through, you win. Um, but you st should start thinking about, well, what would I want to do after I kind of get that first set in? So this is called incremental design, where uh, what's going to happen uh, after version one? You might want to have a version two, where maybe version two, uh, there's some kind of scoring capability of some kind. So I haven't really thought about that yet, but maybe if you get through in a certain amount of time, you get some bonus points. Or maybe you want to put some obstacles in, the, in their way. So maybe hitting a good obstacle adds points and maybe hitting a bad obstacle takes points away. Uh, maybe uh, I'm going to have different levels of maze, so there'll be more than one maze. So maybe it starts very simply, that's level one, and if you do well with that one, it goes into level two. Now there's all kinds of ideas you can do with a maze, and if I get bogged down with that at the start where I have to do every single thing, I don't know if I'll ever finish my project. So it's a good idea to say, let me just start with the simplest thing and then I'll incrementally add different layers of functionality as I have time to work on them. And uh, that's a very modern way to design and I highly recommend it. So uh, I used Google Drawing for this and then I went and created a Google Doc to put this in. My Google Doc that I created. And what I did was I, um, I hit this insert button and I said insert a drawing and I inserted from my Google Drive that drawing that I created uh, and it put it right in here. And what's cool about doing that is that if I change 
my drawing. Let's see if I can do this on the fly here. If I were to change my drawing, let me see if I just move, um, whoops, if I move this down a little bit, say, and then I go back to my pseudocode, see where it says update? If I hit that, it will get the updated version. So it's kind of a nice way to kind of have a living document where if you want to make some change to your design, you can do that. Or if you want to work with somebody else and maybe they're working on the drawing and, and you want to work on this, it's kind of a very nice way to collaborate if you're using Google products, which we are at our school. So uh, it's, it's a really nice way to kind of get your design to work with the drawing. So anyway, it's just a plain old ordinary Google Doc. So this is my drawing, and then I've started to put some pseudocode in. So this is an example of pseudocode. Now I'm using something with a little hashtag in front, a pound sign, as to represent a comment, and we need to have further discussion about comments in coding. But um, Scratch has kind of a strange way of adding comments or not necessarily strange, a little bit different than text-based languages. So I'm using a hashtag, which is what um, Python uses. So I'm using that to represent a comment. Now this is not real code. This is just me kind of thinking out loud about what I wanted to do. So um, when the green flag is clicked in Scratch, I'm gonna do a broadcast message that says start game. And so a broadcast in Scratch is kind of starts an asynchronous process. It says start this thing. So anybody who is listening for this start game will start. So the rest of this is when I receive the start game, what's going to happen? So there's a Maze Runner sprite. That's what I'm calling this little cloud figure here. So in that sprite, when that sprite receives the start game thing, right, the broadcast that was here, when it receives that, it's going to go to the start icon, meaning this little uh, sprite that's running the maze will be placed here. And then I'm going to use my arrow keys as a way of moving things around. So when I receive an up arrow, I'm going to move up five units. Now, I'm not really sure how many. That's why I put a question mark there. But move up some amount. But if I hit a side, I'm going to move back to where I started, and I'm going to stop and lose the game. Because if you hit a side, you lose. However, if I hit the end icon, this green thing, I'm going to stop and win. Now, if I don't hit either of those things, well, I just move up five. When I receive the right arrow, the user clicks on the right arrow key, I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm going to move right five instead of up five. But if I hit a side, I move back and stop and lose. And if I hit the end icon, I stop and win. So I have similar kinds of pseudocode for the down arrow and the left arrow. If it's a down arrow, move down five units or whatever looks best when I actually code this. But then do the same thing. If I hit the left arrow, move left five. Um, and then if I hit a side, move back and stop everything that I did before. Now, as I'm doing my pseudocode, I'm noticing I'm basically doing the same thing four times, which is fine. You can leave it like that. But what if I decide, well, I really want to do something else as well. And I want all the rest of them to do that too. I have to change it like in all these other places. And it can be really hard keeping them in sync. So, oops, looks like I got a little typo here. Uh, so uh, what I'm thinking about by writing the pseudocode is that maybe I'm going to want some kind of new block of some kind um, to handle the moving, or maybe I want to do a broadcast and have you know it being received by all the same code. Maybe. So by doing the pseudocode, it's really helping me think about what it is that I'm going to actually want to code. Now this is by no means completely everything that's going to need to have happen. Um, I probably want to add some pseudocode for the restart button. So I probably want to do something like, um, so when the reset restart button is hit, um, so this is for the restart sprite. So when I'm clicked, right, somebody types on it, then uh, I'm going to broadcast start game. So whatever I have receiving start game will fire. So like the, the icon, go back to the start position, things like that. And then uh, maybe that's all I need to do. But at least I've thought about it. And when I'm coding, I can certainly you know, find other issues. And you're not, you're not going to have every single thing you need in your pseudocode. There are things you're not going to think about, most likely, certainly when you're starting out. But at least you have kind of an outline. You know where to go. So this is actually pretty important. And when you're first starting out, students are pretty resistant to it. And I will say that grown-up adult coders sometimes don't want to do design. 
but it really is a very helpful thing, especially as your projects get more complex. This doesn't mean that you're not allowed to play around in Scratch and try different things just to maybe, just to learn little techniques and things, that's perfectly fine. But if you're trying to make a really cool, great looking finished product that you can be proud of, uh, writing some kind of pseudocode and design plan definitely uh, will, will make your, your project better. You might even find some problems ahead of time. You might get more creative thoughts going as you think about it. So this didn't take me very long to do, and the more you kind of work in Scratch and other coding languages, you'll find that actually doing this sort of thing is not very hard at all. This part of the discussion is for my students. So if you are one of my students, you're going to have to fill out a code planning form in Google Forms, and it will be attached into Google Classroom. So if you've created one of those other documents, this should go pretty quickly. So you're going to put your last name here. I'm just going to put my initial and Mrs. Um, you obviously put your first name, uh, pick your block, and then briefly describe your project. So uh, I'm creating a maze project where a sprite traverses the maze without hitting the sides. Okay, I'm doing this in Scratch. Uh, that's all we've got so far. The user interface and flow. Okay, so you're going to write a little bit about what this looks like. So a sprite starts at a start icon and the user presses the arrow keys to get through the maze to the end icon. Whoops. And I'm going to put in parentheses C pseudocode document because I did put a picture in there. And we're going to attach that later. Right, so I definitely need um, the little maze runner guy. Um, I'm going to need um, a little start icon and a little end icon, little sprites to hold that. I'm probably going to need the restart button sprite as well. Again, like you may not know everything yet, but just what I know so far. I, I don't know if I need variables. We haven't really talked about what variables are. They're a way of storing values in your code. I don't think I need any. Yet, if I introduce scoring, I probably will. Introduce scoring or different levels of maze that they can use, I will need some. So, and again, if you don't know, you just say, I'm not really sure yet, that's fine. And what kind of coding structures will I need? So I know I've written some pseudocode, so I definitely am going to need sprites and objects. Don't know if I need variables yet. We haven't really talked about what loops are, so you may or may not know if you need any loops yet. Uh, conditionals. Almost always you're going to need some sort of way of, of testing. If this happens, then do this, else do that. So I'm definitely going to need that, even though we haven't talked about them much. I may or may not need some custom blocks. Uh, I'm going to check that because I, I saw I had some repeating code within my pseudocodes. So I might need that. Definitely going to need some of these broadcast receive sort of events things. I'm not really sure yet. And again, you're not going to know all of this, but it just shows you kind of thought about it. And then uh, this part says, uh, what are things you need to do in your version one versus what maybe can wait a little bit later? So um, for version one, uh, I definitely need um, a maze that a sprite can traverse with um, a good message if it makes it through the maze and a bad message if it doesn't, and a way to restart if you don't quite make it. So future versions, uh, what do I want? Maybe I want some kind of scoring. Maybe I want different levels. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe I want to put some obstacles in the maze to gain or lose points. Maybe, who knows, um, competitive maze, mazes where you work with another person, right? Maybe, but it's just ideas if you have some. And then, so the pseudocode. So what I'm going to do here is that, that file that we created, I'm going to use the add file. So you click on that. And you can drag it if you have it on your desktop, which I don't, so I'm just going to search for it. Uh, I know I called it pseudocode something, so I'm just going to search my drive for it. Let's see what comes up here. 
yeah, here it is. And you can attach it right there. And then you just submit and it goes to me and I can see what your plans are. You'll also be able to see it again in Google Classroom. I'll have some future videos where we actually kind of work from this coding plan to come up with a very simple maze project in Scratch. So once again, thank you for watching and listening and happy coding.